Hello, my name is Daniel Gomes and I'm the manager of the Archive.pt web archive. I'm going to share our experience on improving the robustness of our service. I believe that our lessons learned will be useful to any person involved in information technology projects. Archive.pt preserves millions of files archived from the web since 1996. It provides a public search service over this information. It preserves information written in several languages and it provides user interfaces in Portuguese and English. In 2007, the project was launched. And in 2010, our first prototype that enabled searching pages from the past was made publicly available. However, in September 2013, the service co collapsed due to an hardware malfunction. We experienced that a loss of 17% of, of our archive data corresponded to approximately 17 terabytes of data. There were interruptions in the acquisition of web content and the search service was suspended. Between 2014 and 2016, we have been working on the recovery and improvement of our service, which has been stable. So, the objective of this, of this presentation is to share our experience so that other services can also learn from our mistakes and adopt solutions. To define the context of our work, I'm going to briefly describe the system that supports the Archive.pt service. Our web archiving workflow is mainly automatically. In general, it works similarly to a live web search engine. The web content is crawled from the live web and stored on a data center. Then, it is processed using Hadoop to generate the indexes that will support the search service. However, there are two main differences from a live web search engine. The first one is that our search component must rank search results considering their temporal features. The second one is that our web archive must try to reproduce the preserved web, con web content as close as it possible to its original format. Archive.pt is a medium-sized web archive. Its system is hosted on 85 servers and, hosts and holds 4 billion files, which will require a total of 468 terabytes of storage to be preserved. The estimated data growth is of approximately 7 to 2 terabytes per year. So next, I will describe the five main man ma measures that we adopted to improve the robustness of our service. The first measure was to migrate the architecture of our, uh, of, of, of our hardware and software to a shared nothing paradigm. The objective was that the failure of a single equipment could never jeopardize the service availability. The system architecture was redesigned to elim eliminate all single points of failure. We abandoned the centralized hardware architecture based on blade server enclosures and storage arrays and adopted a fully distributed architecture based on independent rack servers. Blade systems are compact. Therefore, in theory, they should lead to an efficient management of physical space at our data center. However, in practice, we witnessed the opposite. Using blade server enclosures had been causing the waste of physical space at our data center. The reason is that the physical space occupied by the enclosures was taken even if they did not have all its slots filled. Then, the space occupied by the enclosures could not be released even after some of its, of its servers were disabled. So physical space was occupied even when it was not being used. On its turn, the management of physical space using independent rack servers is simpler and more efficient because only operational servers occupy physical space and this space can be uh, released immediately as servers break. It is a well-known fact in engineering 
that the failure rate along time follows a bathtub curve. That is, engineering components fail more often when they are new or old. In computer engineering, there is a common awareness that old components tend to fail. However, we frequently forget that new components are also very prone to failures. Therefore, we decided to perform load tests immediately after buying new hardware to induce failures by applying simulated workload using open source tools such as Bonnie, Stressed or Memtest. The objective is to identify faulty hardware during the warranty period and before deploying hardware into the production environment, where failures could have impact on the service availability. At the network level, we segregate development from production, so that these networks do not interfere with each other. For instance, if we, if we cause a network overflow during a development experiment, this will not affect the normal function of the service in production. All the development machines are connected in a private network. The machines that belong to the quality assurance and production environments are accessible through the internet. Okay, so the second measure was to reinforce our replication policies. We started replicating data at several levels using several distinct media types. So we use tapes to perform online off, pardon me, offline backups of data. We make bundle backups to tape every four months, including archive data and the corresponding indexes. And then later, we perform random test recoveries from, tapes, from, from tape. Pardon. Notice that this process is demanding because data recovery from tape is very slow, but it is the only way to assure that the backups are being properly performed and documented. We use hard disks to perform online backups of data. The disks installed on each server are redundant using RAID 5. As a rule of thumb, all data must be replicated at at least on two independent servers. During the execution of web crawls, we perform daily backups of the crawl data on independent servers. This way, in case a crawl, a crawl server completely fails, the worst case scenario is that we lose one day of crawl data. This has never happened so far, anyway. So we also perform backups to geographically distant locations by moving the tapes with bundles of our data from Lisbon to Porto, which is 275 kilometers away from our original uh, data center, and also copying archive data to the Internet Archive through the internet, which is more than 9,000 kilometers away from our geographical location. The third measure was to improve service monitoring. Since the beginning of our project that we used monitoring tools to verify service availability. However, if a monitoring tool fails, we would not be able to identify a service failure. So the question that arose was, who is monitoring the monitoring tools? So we decided to apply redundancy on the monitoring tools to detect failures or malfunctions even when the monitoring tools fail. So the vendor tools are not enough to detect hardware failures or resource exhaustion. So we adopted free open source platforms such as Cacti or Ganglia to monitor hardware resources. The service availability is monitored, is monitored using an internal Nagios platform, but also using a free cloud service called name, uh, named, pardon me, Uptime Robot. The access st statistics are monitored using an internal AWS Stats instance, but also Google Analytics. 
Besides, different monitoring tools provide complementary perspectives that enable a more comprehensive analysis of the performance of our service. Moreover, we periodically induce faults on system components to test monitoring and failover mechanisms. It is always better to identify problems when you are ready for them. Okay, so the fourth measure was to reactivate quality assurance for software development. When we fix a software problem, it is common to introduce a new one. Therefore, something that was previously working fine stops working. These events are so common in software development that they have a proper name regressions. The main reason why regressions occur is because software developers focus their attention on the solution of the new problem and not on the validation of the solutions that they applied to solve previous problems. Basically, people get tired from doing repeatedly the same, that is, testing. The good news is that computers don't. Thus, we automatized code testing at several levels. The first level of testing is to periodically compile all code to detect integration problems. The unit problems, the unit tests, pardon me, verify that the software components comply with this, their specifications. And on its turn, the, the functional tests simulate end user workflows. For example, searching for an archive page. There are, many in free, there are many free and powerful tools to automatize testing, such as Selenium HQ, Sauce Labs, Jenkins, or SonarCube. A service may stop working due to excessive workload. The workload capacity must be periodically and systematically measured. We simulate and measure workload capacity using JMeter. A new release is deployed to production only if it meets the minimal quality thresholds of three responses per second with response speed of five seconds maximum. Having these thresholds in, thresholds in mind, we can proactively respond to abnormal service workloads, workloads resultant from dissemination activities or denial of service attacks. Security concerns are a must for any online service. Any computer starts suffering attacks quickly after being connected to the internet. It is not a matter of if our service could suffer an attack, but when our service will suffer an attack. We use the ZEP tool from the Open Web Application Security Project to perform automatic security testing. We are also lucky to have security test, uh, experts on our organization, but th th that also helped us identifying uh, potential security issues. However, um, the ZEP tool has been enough to identify the most critical security vulnerabilities. Even if we provide a fully functional service, this does not guarantee that the users can use it effectively and efficiently. Communication or functional issues may arise that inhibit users to take advantage of the provided functionalities. Systematic usability tested, testing conducted by skilled user, user experience professionals enables the identification of the problems that really affect service quality. Notice that most technical problems that, uh, that most technical problems are reflected on usability obstacles. For instance, if hardware resources are scarce, this will be reflected on slowness perceived by the end user. It is really important that usability testing and result an results analysis is conducted by skilled user experience professionals. Otherwise, we may bias testing or misinterpret the obtained results. 
We received help from, human computer, from the Human Computer Interaction Group from the University of Lisbon and also invested on user experience uh, training to our team. The fifth and last measure that I would like to share is to document procedures but also to systematically test the generated documentation. Generating documentation is obviously important to manage a service, but there are different types of documentation for different purposes. We use a restricted access wiki to document internal procedures. An open access GitHub repository to document software. We write and publish technical reports about system analysis to get feedback. And we frequently make internal and external presentations to seed collaborations. Some of these presentations are recorded on video and published online. We also invest a significant amount of effort on, publish on publishing our scientific and technical achievements to get peer review that will contribute to define our strategies to the future. Generating documentation is important. But who tests the generated documentation? Confusing or misleading, doc misleading documentation is of little use. So we established a simple procedure to test documentation and assess its quality. So first we establish a kind of initiation ritual in which a new member must make a full installation of the system from scratch based on the existing documentation with minimum help from the colleagues. During this process, the newcomer must update the documentation every time an obstacle is detected. On everyday work, every time a new important documentation is generated by a team member, the test procedure is also uh, performed by a different colleague following the, the previously described procedure. So, our software repository is hosted on GitHub. So, our software and documentation is born open source. This exposure increases the sense of responsibility on the developers and therefore increases software quality. Now, I will present some results related to our service that are indicative of the effectiveness of the applied measures. The crawling and indexing of new content from the web has been stable for the past two years. The temporal search service was available 100% of the time during 2016. And we are recovering our users and gaining new ones. Google Analytics registered an average of over 4,000 users per month, from which 90% are new. To summarize, the main lessons learned were follow strict share nothing architectures for hardware and software design. Replicate data on multiple and distinct and independent media support. Despite the enthusiasm of developing new services, always keep in mind that software development without proper quality assurance leads to waste of resources or even project failure. Test everything, every time, including the testing tools and documentation. Whenever possible, automatize the testing procedures. And finally, accept staff rotation and proactively prepare for it. I hope that these lessons learned can be useful to you. I believe that they are applicable to any web-based information system. Please feel free to email me. Any comments or suggestions are welcome. Thank you for your attention. And now I'd like to invite you to try archive.pt. Cheers.